So there's a story told of Gandhi, where a lady uh, brought her son to, to Gandhi and said, Mr. Gandhi, I don't know how she would address him, uh, sir, sir, uh, can you speak to my son here? My son, he's eating far too much sugar and it's rotting his teeth out and he's addicted to it and uh, just tell him to stop. And Gandhi looked at, at her and looked at the boy and said, come back in a week's time. So she was a bit perplexed. She thought that she had requested something relatively simple. Didn't see what the issue was. Said, okay, I'll come back in a week. So she came back in a week and she said, sir, it's, it, it's me again. I'm here with my boy. He, he eats too much sugar. Tell him to stop. And so then he looked at her, looked at the boy. And as he looked at the boy, then he said, stop eating too much sugar. It's not good for you. And the little boy said, okay. And then the, mo the mom said, a bit perplexed, why couldn't you just have said that last week? Uh, we had to make the whole journey a second time. Why couldn't you have just said it last week and save us the trip? And he said, well, I couldn't ask your boy to stop eating sugar while I was eating sugar. So he had to give, I said, I give up sugar for the week. I thought it was very, very interesting, of a very interesting insight into how he saw leadership or how he saw the importance of example, how he saw the, the, even the value, the hidden value of sacrifice or of suffering, where in order to have any kind of uh, moral conviction behind what we say or moral weight behind what we say, it's not the eloquence of the words but the life behind it. And this is uh, very, it's exemplary in, in, in so many of the lives of the saints as well, where many of them, so, some were obviously stellar students and theologians and so on and so forth, but many of them were relatively simple, uh, kind of basic education. Uh, and even if you read some of, the, some of the homilies, I always find them interesting to read some of the homilies of, of some of the, the saints where uh, St. Francis, for example, is, is, is famous. Now, he wasn't a priest, but he was famous for having this one particular homily, well, teaching, where he just held up the cross, looked at it, and wept. And everyone was moved. Everyone was moved to tears, and they understood. But he hadn't actually said anything. You know, just like moved to tears by, because of the life, the example of the man beforehand. Or when you read, again, some of the homilies maybe of, of a Padre Pio or something, they're re re or a Curie of ours, really, really simple. They're really simple ideas. You go, well, yeah, I got that. Yeah, I get that. That's... that's Nothing exceptionally amazing there. But if you were there listening to the man, the saint, giving that homily, that was very, very different because the, of the life behind it. There was, it's like that person wasn't just reading nice thoughts that they read somewhere, but they were passing on experiences that they had lived. You know, their, 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 their encounter with the Lord, their own prayer life, their own sacrifice, their own hidden sufferings and, 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 and tears and all of that. All of that was behind their homily or was behind their teaching and that's what gave it weight not the eloquence of the words and I don't think it's any different with, with us uh, I don't think it's any different actually even with the Lord I, what, what the Lord said at times like it's so simple it's actually uh, you know he, 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 if you think of some of the parables like they're really really simple the story of the prodigal son, it's a lovely little story. I mean, it's a parable, so we don't have to go looking for the historical details of where this happened. Jesus says it's a parable, so it's a made-up story. But that communicates profound truths about God's mercy. Uh, but it's a very simple story. It's not, it's not complicated. I mean, children can understand. Children do understand that this is, this is taught in primary school. It's amazing like, that Jesus can, can teach such, with such depth and love uh, and profundity, but in such a way that children can understand you know, he tells the story of the father who asks two sons to come out and work in the vineyard. And the first son says, yes, I'll go, but doesn't go. And the second son says, uh, no, I won't go, but afterwards thinks better of it and goes. Which of the two did the father's will? I mean, such a simple little story. I mean, everyone knows it's the second son, even though he messed up at the beginning, at least at the end, he got it all right. Uh, Jesus knew how to communicate things, but it wasn't just, the, again, the eloquence or intelligence behind the words, but the life behind it, and dare I say, the suffering behind it. St. Paul in today's reading, <clears throat> he's, after going through a, a, an awful ordeal, right? so you have the scribes, 
if the Pharisees and the Sadducees, uh, both of whom are accusing Paul of, of rousing up the crowd and the, preaching this, 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 this Jesus guy who they don't want to take the blame for killing and so on and so forth. So Paul, in a, in a moment of, of inspiration, decides to, he knows how to divide. So there's this one kind of singular enemy against them, Paul versus the Jews, but he knows how to divide them because there's, there's Pharisees and Sadducees. Sadducees don't believe in life after death or angels. That's why they're Sadducee. Do you get that? Okay. Uh, and then there's the Pharisees that believe in both, and, uh, or, or the spiritual life. So there's three things that they don't, they don't agree with. Okay. So Paul is able to divide it. Now he's just divided his enemy. Uh, the, the tribune here is getting annoyed at all of this. So basically, he wants to send him to Rome. Eventually, we'll, we'll, we'll read that over the next couple of days. But Jesus says to him, Courage, you have borne witness for me in Jerusalem. Now you will do the same in Rome. How did Paul just bear witness? What did he do? That particular event kind of looked like a failure, if I'm honest. Like, the crowd was split, okay, so his enemy was, was, was divided in two, but Paul still wasn't safe. In fact, the, 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 the tribune has to take him out of the crowd so that they don't tear him to pieces, the reading says. That doesn't look like a victory to me. What do you mean you've borne witness to me here? Nothing, it doesn't look like a success. And his bearing witness to him in Rome, what's that going to be? That's going to be his decapitation and death. The shedding of his blood. So like, there's a time for, for the, the preaching and teaching and, and uh, all of that side of things. But ultimately, the greatest witness that we will give isn't merely through our words. Important as words are, because we do have to preach and teach and talk. We do. At some point, like, how, how will people know about Jesus unless we speak about him? But the greatest witness we give isn't, isn't through our words. If that was the case, all you have to do, as I say, I could give you some four or five key books, read those, know those well, and you'd be a fantastic preacher. Grant. But that does, what does that mean? What the, well, that won't change hearts. That won't change hearts. What changes hearts, as, as Gandhi thought by his example, is the example behind it. The, the, the hidden prayer, the hidden sacrifices. But we will never preach more eloquently than when we're on the cross. We will never preach more eloquently than when we bleed. We will never preach more eloquently uh, following the Lord's example as when our hands and feet are nailed and our mouth is parched and we can barely mutter seven words as the Lord did. The greatest homily he ever gave wasn't the Sermon, to, the sermon on the Mount. The greatest homily he ever gave was the cross. In our lives, there will be trouble, as we read <coughs> St. John's Gospel a couple of days ago. But do not fear, for I have overcome the world. Crosses and difficulties and adversity will come our way. But we do not need to fear. Painful and all as those experiences are, the Lord has the victory in the end. And the Lord knows how to turn that cross and that adversity and that pain and those tears and turn all of that into something good and life-giving and beautiful. That's the, the, the genius behind why the Lord allows suffering. It's not to punish us or, or so that he can feel his wrath somehow satisfied or placated. No, 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 it's to teach us is to teach us the value of renouncing our own will, our own desires, our own selves, in favour of something greater, which is the essence of love. So we ask you, Lord, to teach us in our own lives the value of our example, the value of suffering carried out of love, the value of renouncing ourselves in favour of you, that all may be one, as you and the Father are one. Amen. The following is a special appeal by Father Patrick Cahill. 
Dear brothers and sisters, thank you so much for joining us uh, for these homilies on YouTube or whatever podcast media you're listening to us on. Uh, it's a great privilege to be able to serve you all in this way. Uh, if I could ask you please to pray for us here in Holy Family Mission. We're heading into our eighth year of uh, faith formation for the young people who are attending here. And it's a great gift and privilege to be able to work here. But we would ask if you would pray for us and pray for all of our intentions here as well, that we can continue this work. And if you feel the Lord is in any way calling you or asking you to support us financially, we would greatly appreciate that too. So if you go to, onto our website, holyfamilymission.ie, there's a donate button there, and we'd greatly appreciate uh, your donations so that we can keep this work going. Uh, it does, unfortunately, cost uh, a bit to run this place, so uh, our, we greatly rely on our benefactors. And, of course, we play, pray for all of our benefactors' needs, especially on Wednesday, the day traditionally dedicated to St. Joseph, the Father of all providence. So thank you so much uh, in advance for your prayerful support and also for those who are able to uh, uh, assist us financially. We are immensely grateful. God bless you.